True Lies Season 1 Episode 4 Thoughts and this episode is called Rival Companions. So, as usual, absolutely love this episode. Spoilers for the episodes leading up to and including this one and the film that the show is based on. So, yeah, very, very cool weapon at the, the start with the, you know, basically they gotta plug their ears. If not, like, your ears will bleed and, like, it can shatter glass. You know, this, this kind of sonic weapon. Yeah, really, really cool. And they shoot, you know, that, that, ah, I think he was a minister or a secretary, I guess, you know, some, something like that. And let's see. So, so yeah, you know, um, make sure your ears bleed, can shatter glass. You know, I'm I'm glad that they in in the episode it just makes this this kind of you know it, it sounds like loud it has this kind of vibrating sound you know in in real life of course if you you are looking for some kind of noise that makes ears bleed and can shatter glass what you want to do is listen to a Republican politician. And, yeah, we learn, you know, it can really escalate things between the Albanians and the Serbs. And they say, you know, it could lead to tens of, tens of thousands of dead, millions of fugitives. I mean, I appreciate that they mention fugitives, but considering that the show already does a little bit of whitewashing of American, like, spy organizations and such. Yeah, like, in in real life, a lot of fugitives are, like, specifically because of American foreign policy, not, like, in spite of it. And the, the episode doesn't actually feature any fugitives, so... It's not really conveying the, the message that I would really love to see that we need to open our borders to fugitives and, and like, treat them with humanity. Now, yeah, so they mention they're bringing in the wolf and talk about how he's, you know, he's basically a, a sociopath and... Helen talks about her, you know, weapons training, and then they do the thing like in the movie where he's not paying attention to her, so she says something ridiculous. And I like that they went with, so I'm going to adopt a chimpanzee, which, yeah, be, be careful though, I hear that Harry hates every APCs, from chimpanzee to chimpanzee. And, you know, Harry explains why he's distracted, and Helen apologizes and says, you know what, I'll, I'll leave you to it, you know. I really feel like people who say that she's a Mary Sue or a Shrew, they kind of just can't see a strong female character and not see that, because that's really not at all what she is. I love that the you know she's going through the 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 weapons training and you know she gets distracted because she you know and the the her teacher there says Miss Tasker are you with us which just the fact that a teacher has that done to the keeping in mind I have a ton of empathy for teachers but it was kind of funny that they they had a teacher be on the receiving end of of that kind of thing, and it w was also like you know he says okay so you want to wipe it ten times, and then he shows her can you show me what a bag looks like again can can you show me what it how many times ten is because I'm really not entirely this is this is going way over my head here you know that was. Dude, just, it's enough to just say, you want to wipe it ten times. And, yeah, love seeing Matthew Lillard again. Um, I know 
I understand why some people thought he was very extra in the 90s. I mean, I suppose it's, I'm, I'm one of the lucky ones. I never felt any sort of obligation to watch most of the movies that people really hate him for. Like, I'm almost certain he was in Hackers, and he was in that one that Spoonie really hated because it was an adaptation, but not really, of a game that he really loved. Um, I'll have it momentarily. It is, of course, called... If IMDb wants to cooperate here... Okay, here we go. Holy crap, he was... Oh, he was part of Scooby-Doo all the way back in 1978. He has an uncredited voice role as man. Maybe that's why he got to play Shaggy. See, when I think of him, I... Oh, that's right, he does appear in... Uh, yeah, okay. When I think of Matthew Lillard, I think of Scream, and I think his performance in that one is perfect. And I get why some people might feel like it's excessive. The Spoony one, that was Wing Commander. I hear that he is absolutely unbearable in, in that. He was in 13 Ghosts? Wow, I don't remember that at all. I watched that movie multiple times. I don't hate him in the in the Scooby Doo movies. I honestly I feel like he's one of the ones that kind of work. But yeah, you know, so so I don't. Yeah, I I don't I don't really dislike him in general, but I absolutely love his work in in Scream. Like he's, it's it's one of those things where like. So many actors would not be able to do that well. Would would overdo it in in one way or another, but he absolutely nails it. And apparently, like I, I saw an interview where he said, "Oh yeah, it was a little too much." No, dude, if you're watching, absolutely not. You did one hundred percent perfect, and just but but yeah, you know he he was really great great here as well, and. Let's see. Yeah, and, you know, we see... I, I really appreciate that, you know, we've been told about the wolf before we before Matthew Lillard appears on screen, but we, we you know, we meet... We, we learn what he's like as a person before we find out that that is the wolf. You know, so we, there's... You know, like Helen, we can kind of see his humanity... So so yeah, I really pretty like think about how different the it would have played if like the moment Helen sat down with him he said My name is Wolf. Who are you? You know, but but no, it's it's only at the I think it's at the end of their first conversation, you know, after a lot of very effective bonding. Like I I don't understand why people say that the like the acting and writing are bad. I really thought the bonding worked. Be, yeah, between the the two of them, and you know, we hear this heartbreaking story about how she was lonely because when f she first, you know, got to to school in America, she was like she didn't speak English yet. So just yeah, and and she says, well, that's how I you know it really motivated me to learn English, and that's how that whole thing started. You know, she's been learning languages ever since. And let's see, you know, yeah, I, I really hope that hearing that story can help teach more empathy. You know, I, I don't know how many kids are watching this show, although it is largely safe for, for I've, I've seen some reviews where people say that they, you know, let's see, was it watched with family? Yeah, I think some people said they're watching it with the entire family. You know, it doesn't go, like, there There are implications that the kids aren't going to fall, catch up, catch on. Yes, that's what I'm going with. You have all the words, you make them a sentence. And the, just, yeah, you know, if not kids, and, you know, hopefully some kids, but other than that, you know, maybe some some young people can watch it and, it can be part of how they parent their own kids, you know. And I, I, you know, he says, you know, apparently I smile at the wrong times. And she, you know, she says there's a wrong time to smile. And that's just, that's such a beautiful, like, and, and you know, 
by the end of the episode, she does not like retract. You know, she never for for the the. I, I don't know that I felt it was absolutely necessary to do the joke there at the end. With you know, thinking of you when there's a burning building in the background. He's I forget if it was a euro, but he was definitely eating something. You know, I don't necessarily think that was necessary, but even so, she never says. Oh, I really regret saying, yeah, there's definitely, he definitely smiles at the wrong time. No, by the end, she's still, you know, and, and it is that, that thing of, like, I mean, at the end of the day, there is a sort of, you know, is, is that not a matter of personal opinion? Like, the, the, I feel like if you, if you go into something that, is bad, but you're like trying to keep, you know, trying trying to keep from being completely like devastated by, which I realize is not his issue, but I don't know. I, f I feel like that, you know, w when things are really dark, you know, th things are darkest before the dawn, and yeah, crack a smile. Let's see, and yeah, we learn that he is the the wolf and yeah you know gets along great with Helen and so yeah this this episode the bad guys are arms dealers so I really appreciate you know I know it's it's an easy you know for, for a piece of American media say the bad guys are arms dealers but there was like at the end of the day a lot of the the worst you know a lot of the people who contribute the most in a bad way to the the wars of the world are arms dealers a number of them are american and you know the the yeah it it would be great if you know that was if you know at the very least regulate you know i i'm not saying like i get that some degree of where arms dealer is maybe necessary but uh, yeah and yeah Nathan is always saying what I would do it you know after saying you know oh yeah this you know the you're they're gonna do this really awful thing you know I know because that's what I would do and Nathan shows up at the task or residence and like you know, he's he's like, oh yeah, you know, once you bypass one omega level security or omega sector security, bypassing the rest of them is just a piece of cake, you know. And and like he, I honestly, I thought that he was there for Helen, but he's super surprised that she's there. So he, you no, know, he really was there for Harry, you know. And the the you know, he says, so I, you know, I noticed. I, I try to look at body language, and I couldn't help but notice. You know, meanwhile, Harry's there in the you know in the background. He's got like hunched shoulders. He looks like death. You know, Harry kind of had his shoulders on. And the moment he says those words, Harry stops. You know, hunching the shoulders. That was pretty funny. That's yeah. I know. I I just I love that kind of joke. It's 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 easy. Is it's. it's you know, there's tons of them, but I just, I love them. And, yeah, Nathan is going to train Helen, and, and, and the thing, you know, when, when I'm done training you, you're going to be able to shoot the filling out of the guy's mouth at a thousand yards. Oh, they should call me the dentist, and then, Jinx, you owe me a Coke. And, you know, Harry's like, please stop, please make this stop like he looks like he he you know he's like okay this nightmare has gotten pretty bad by now i think it's time to wake up what do you think just <laughs> he he could not hate this more if like there's just there's no way he could hate this more and yeah so this villain is german so again it's a white person villain of you know and yeah I, I really I, I I greatly appreciate let's see I think it was maybe the first episode like they said he was Basque 
but he, you know, I think people who don't know that Basque, it's like, actually, hold on, are there, I guess there might, um, are there Muslims in Basque? Um, yeah, yeah, there are a number of um, uh, Muslims in Basque. Uh, wait, am I looking at the right? Huh. Oh, I might be looking at the wrong. Anyway, you know, I, I think it's it's extremely important today to make people aware that many of the biggest threats to people all around the world are white dudes. You know, it's not... We have plenty of media that's telling people to watch out for Muslims. I'm not saying that there are zero Muslims who are a threat, but it's been blown way out of proportion. There's been way too little coverage of other nationalities. Uh, yeah, let's see, Muslim is a faith. Other, um, yeah, ethnicities that we wouldn't necessarily think of as Muslim. Now, yeah, so the, the, um, I don't think it is, A hot take to suggest that the wolf for Nathan is probably on the spectrum they don't go you know they don't say that I don't think in the episode but you know the things he says about smiling at the wrong time and he he had to research other people to become friends with them and you know he 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 has an ability he has a knack for thinking the way that the bad guys do and and the kind of you know and and it doesn't you know he says he he doesn't really feel feelings but at the same time he can be very nice to helen so you know yeah it it seems like he's on the spectrum i've mentioned before that i have tried to to befriend Aspies, or, you know, they used to call it Asperger Syndrome, but I feel like I heard that that's apparently not... I love the field of psychology and psychiatric. I really feel like they gotta stop changing words every single time the mainstream has accepted, oh, that word means that. But anyway, I'm... Yes, so... I've I've tried to befriend some and yeah you know you you'll find like a lot of people struggle to to connect with them but if you try to speak their language if you if you try to engage with their interests you know yeah countless of them are very nice people they just they struggle a little with you know social interaction they're a little awkward so I really appreciate that this episode does actually, you know, yeah, again, this could really help increase empathy, and I, did, I, I read a couple of, of reviews of people who brought up this episode, I don't think any of them actually commented on, I don't know, maybe a bunch of people didn't even pick up that it was, you know, he was coded as being on the spectrum, they just criticized that line about, you know, the um what was her name again she's the um the boss trilby she says you know anything that can i'll i'll work with anyone who can stop you know the this kind of casual cold-blooded murder of innocent people you know that was a thing that at least one person was like ah, they must see that all the time and it's like you don't think any of them would maintain enough humanity to be upset by that like that, I mean, essentially their job is to stop stuff like that. But, but yeah, I, I don't think I saw anyone even comment on him probably being on the spectrum or the fact that the episode is kind of, it, you know, basically Harry and Helen, our two leads, have different perspectives on a number of things and each of these episodes will examine these different perspectives and acknowledge that there's some truth to both. Now, 
That sounds like a centrist, which centrists frustrate me. Centrists, a lot of centrists are basically just they they feel bad about just saying that they're conservative, but they tend to side with conservatives. So it's just like if you're if you're secretly a conservative and you're calling yourself a centrist, just call yourself a conservative. You're not nobody respects you. Well, very very few people respect you more for saying you're centrist than conservative. Centrist, a lot of the time is just like I don't really want to take a side because people will be mad at me, and it's like you know this. Politics is life or death for some people. I, I think it's only right that we all take a side. But anyway, the, the, the issues that have been brought up so far on the show are ones where it's not just the, the kind of both sidesism that plagues centrists. It's actually, no, the, you know, there, these are issues where it's important to look at both sides. Whereas centrists are basically just running interference for fascists and saying that, oh, you know, I don't want to be called a leftist. Anyway, let's see. Okay, that came out wrong. Obviously, it's conservatives, not leftists, who are running interference for fascists. I'm just saying centrists they don't, yeah, they don't want to say that they take a side, but they are also, you know, repeating talking points from conservatives, thus running interference. Anyway, yeah, and the, um, yeah, you know, the, the, you know, Nathan actually says, you know, sometimes I worry I'm just fundamentally broken, and that's, that is something that, that Aspies deal with, and, yeah, really, really appreciate the, the, there's so much media that just does not have enough empathy for, yeah, which does bring up, I, there are more episodes to come, maybe in a later episode we'll have more empathy for fugitives instead of basically saying, oh, you know, when the American spy agencies do their job right, there are no fugitives, you know. But the, yeah, people on the spectrum also a really big, you know, something that there's entirely too little empathy in mainstream culture. I love the montage of the wolf getting along great with everyone other than Harry. Like, literally, every, you know, he's like bringing gifts and it was, you know, they're like, how did you know, you know? And meanwhile, Harry is off in the distance scowling, just, yeah. And yeah, and and Harry continues to be worried about Nathan. He talks to Helen, and she continues to empathize with him. I really, really appreciate these conversations that, like, characters on the show, especially the two of them, Harry and Helen, will have conversations and actually get into like, no, you know this. You know how how do we deal with this? Is it is it this way or this way? And and just yeah, really really great. And and they see the automatic driving truck, and then Nathan points out, oh yeah, it's definitely gonna blow up. Yeah. There's a bomb on your truck. And, yeah, they do manage to, to, to you know, get it to, to not blow up the, the minister, but the Serbs still attack the Albanians, and, you know, they need proof in order to get the, you know, to, to de-escalate the, the conflict. Yeah, and, and I forget if, I'm not 100% certain if they said it, but certainly there's proof in the the um after the shootout at the end of the episode yeah so that you know and and it was also a great like the moment they started shooting at the tires of the truck i was thinking oh i'm prob they're probably like I f they they said a specific term i don't know but, but it i believe it is true that there are car tires that are very very difficult to 
shoot with with small arms at the very least you know and and are used on stuff like that you know it's it's the the yeah so so that or, and if if not certainly it's like within the realm of possibility you know I swear, the moment that this show has like a time machine or something, I will say, okay, that's an, I'm I'm crying foul on this, but so far, like it's just within the realm of possibility. It, you know, it's the show isn't quite set in the real world, but it's a fairly close approximation. You know, it is the romantic comedy action story version of the real world. You know, it's it's is it's a similar world to the the movie or the movie Night and Day. Uh, I forget about. It's been a long time since I watched Mr. and Mrs. Smith. I don't. That one is closer to the the real world, if I recall. Anyway, and the yeah, you know, Gib points out to Harry, you know. I, you know, you're you're a great guy, but sometimes you get tunnel vision. You know, Helen needs support, and Nathan is giving her that support. And then Nathan hears Harry call him a murderous sociopath, and then later he's like, "Oh, there's a there's a context where murderous sociopath is a good thing." It's just... it's... And, you know, Nathan follows Harry and tells him, you know, I, I convinced Trilby to get Helen on this mission. And, yeah, and, and Harry asks Helen, try to see what I see in Nathan. And she says, I will. Now you please try to support my friendship. You know, I, I really love, I really feel like they are even partners in the the relationship. And it's it's great to see. Uh, way too many men still think that the man should make all the decisions, or that if their wife tries to make decisions, that she's just a shrew. So yeah, that's probably where that's coming from, the the, the hate in reviews hating reviews, and I really love the, the detail. I know very little about the German language, but yes, their grammar, very, very different from American grammar, you know, so, so yeah, someone who is used to German grammar trying to write English emails, yeah, they would probably struggle uh, you know, so so that's a that's a really great detail that Helen, who's an expert in languages, you know, she picks up on that. That you know, if you if you just like skim, it's yeah, yeah it's, it's all in English, it's fine. But there are little tells, you know. So so yeah, I actually occasionally adopt German grammar because sometimes I think it is significantly more useful to communicate than than English but yeah 100 percent like and and you know these like you know he used to be this this German spy so yeah it's, it makes sense that he would have a difficult time divorcing himself from from the German languages grammar and give, Gib has to give up the van, and he's like, I just got it settled, you know, I, I just, you know, we'll, we'll, ah, crap, what, what, how do y'all say that in English? Um, I just walked these shoes, and, yeah, I, I, I prob that probably doesn't make any sense, but you know how, like, once you've worn the same pair of shoes for a while, once you've walked in them for a while, they kind of adapt a little to your feet. You know, that's that's basically the, the you know. And he's just, sorry, Mama. We had some great times. And, I, you know, Helen, sometimes she's just so innocent. She's like, 
Gib. There's not going to be any shooting, is there? No, there shouldn't be. So it's just recon. Gib. Now there's going to be shooting, right? Yeah. Now there's going to be sh shooting. He's like, how is that? How is that still a question? You know. And you know, she walks up to him and tells him, "I know you're you're not sure about the seed thing, but I am." You have a good heart, and I want you to remember that. And let's see. Yeah, they do the. There's some CGI fire and a CGI explosion, and I don't blame them for not having the money to do it practically, because there's a lot of cleanup. If you if you you know you you gotta. Yeah. I guess what I'm saying is, I think it might actually be better if they didn't show fire and explosions very much. Like, just cut to a reaction shot. Like, that's what they used to do before CG. They would they would cut to a reaction shot and then cut back to the effect once it was convincing. You know, but, yeah. You know, so far, every single time this show has, like, fire and explosions. Yes, I, I believe it's so far every single time. It's it's just not completely convincing, and it's it's too bad because it is a tad distracting, and I don't find very much else about the show distracting. Mo most of the time, I can I can easily, you know, it, it transports me into the show's world very consistently. But yeah, Let's see. but but yeah, you know, I I realize like. Let's see, have all the episodes... Okay, not not every single episode has aired yet. Let's see, what does that say? Oh, okay, the um, episode 11 is supposed to air sometime today. And then the last two episodes air next week. I am I only have access to these first four. Uh, you know, it's it's the... I'm, I'm watching them through Disney Plus Star here in, uh, in Denmark. So I, I don't... Yeah, I don't have access to the rest of them, but I do realize it's, it's definitely too late. To, I, I don't know. I guess if eventually it the the show becomes popular enough, maybe they'll get another season and like see, I think what I would maybe one option is reaction shots. Another option would be like some kind of relatively simple-ish animation, you know, and it's actually, yeah, I mean, the the graphics are also CG, but they tend to not be, like, it's not so extremely detailed, like, early in this episode, there's the thing, okay, the recon is here, and the other is here, you know, that didn't distract me, so, yeah, you know, maybe, maybe, like, pencil sketch drawing of, like, fire and explosion, that that kind of thing, you know, but, but yeah. I mean, it is still pulling in, so let's see, the pilot pulled in 3.23 million U.S. viewers, and since then, like, most of them get around 2.60 million. Okay, episode 10 only got 2.14 Episode 6 only got 2.36, but yeah, like, I mean, maybe the, maybe the critics are a, just a loud minority? I don't know. I mean, I feel like that's a lot of people to be hate-watching. Anyway, now, the, yeah, um, great action. I, I really, really, very, very exciting ending of the episode with all the shooting and, you know, and, and great tension when Nathan doesn't respond when Harry is, con you know, contacting him and, you know, the, the detail, wow, the, you know, Nathan's heart rate is still like, he, he doesn't seem to be, you know, in, in a heightened state at all like the rest of them. And, you know, there's the thing of, oh, is he going to shoot Harry? And then he does shoot Mueller. So, yeah, very relieved. And Helen is promoted from trainee to agent because of what she, you know, yeah, really 
the mission would not have worked if not for her looking over the the emails that turned out to be fake. And, you know, he gives all of them a, a going away present and Helen gets a friendship bracelet that says the dentist. And, you know, yeah. So, in, in part, the episode was about Helen feeling included and you know the the one person who was immediately open to her was the other guy who wasn't being included you know so so that just yeah really really great kind of yeah and i feel like if this episode had been like let's say maybe 30 or 40 years ago they would have had to have like oh you know he's going to bully her before they become friends and it's like you don't have to do that. Not everybody is like that. And, yeah, you know, by the end of the episode, both of them can appreciate the other's perspective. And, let's see, there was one other thing I wanted to... Um, or maybe that was it, but, but yeah, absolutely love the episode. Like, you know, as you've realized by now, I did have a couple of notes, but yeah, I really, really appreciate the, oh yeah, and I'm actually seeing now, like the, the, um, this was the first of the four episodes to not be directed by, oh, oh written by Matt Nix, the other, the, the, um, yeah. So, yeah, the, it was written by Catherine Price and Nicole Millard. And, yeah, they they did a really good job. It didn't feel like, you know, the yeah, when you have a writer's room, it's really good if you can get everyone on the same page. It felt like it belonged with the rest of them. Let's see. Um, I don't think I really have anything else to say um oh, right the, there's the thing of you know oh helen affects their you know she has suggestions for their missions and uh, you know she through her the missions go better than if not even though harry has been a spy for 17 years yeah i feel like it's still you know like i said i believe that was the video i did on the third episode Basically, she's coming at it with a different perspective, and that's the thing. It's it's not that she's... I really don't think she's a Mary Sue. It's just another set of eyes, you know, and it helps him appreciate her more that, you know, their, their lives don't have to be separate. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, this is in part a show about healing a marriage, you know, and, yeah, like, the movie has this extremely misogynistic idea where the man, the husband, you know, manipulates and sexually extorts the wife, and that's supposed to heal the marriage? That's absurd. Like, if anything, that would completely destroy what was left. Like, that's, we're talking divorce, we're talking years of therapy, yeah. And here, you know, you have, yeah, if you want to heal a marriage, you have conversations, you communicate about the things that bother you. And it's kind of sad that a lot of user reviews basically are written by people that don't seem to think that there should be open communication between a husband and wife. The Like, you know, there, there is at least one review that just straight up says, you know, every time she talks, she's annoying. And it's like, that's on you. There's not, that's, nothing in the show is making her be annoying every time she opens her mouth. That's a you thing, and you should probably, you know, sometimes when people say get therapy, it's like, oh, it's an insult. I don't see it as that. I, I honestly mean, if you... If you can't 
if you watch some of this show and you hate every time Helen opens her mouth, I think you may need therapy. So, yeah. And let's see. I still don't have a specific sign-off phrase for these. Uh, let's see. Oh, my God. Trulies.